Hey, I'm Hannah, and you're watching a new segment on my channel called The Face of Fashion, where I'll be talking to you about the history behind your favorite fashion labels and who's behind them. Today's topic is Eckhaus Lada, my favorite, as you know. Hope you like it. So the story begins with two very creative individuals, Mike Eckhaus and Zoe Lada. They both attended Rhode Island School of Design, also known as RISD, where they would meet and become fast friends. Mike ended up studying sculpture and Zoe was studying textile. Ironically enough, they both didn't study fashion design, but they loved clothes, you know, they loved dressing up. So I'm going to take a minute to talk about their phases of fashion because I thought this was super cool. So when Zoe was like one, her parents, it was impossible for them to dress her. She would throw a fit. She wanted to dress the way she wanted to dress from day one. She would wear these like strappy sandals with leggings and her brother's lizard t-shirt. And um, when Mike was a kid, he had a little bit of an Abercrombie and Fitch phase going on. He would wear everything that was trendy at the time. He would wear Adidas, track pants up until high school. In high school, Mike would just cut up his clothes in half. He would lace them with chains. He was from the ages of 17 to 23, an aggressive dresser. Zoe, on the other hand, she was very into surf style. She wasn't a surfer girl herself, but she liked the aesthetic of it. Her dad is actually a jeweler, which I thought was super cool when I read that she kind of got him to cast a gold quick silver zipper and she would wear the pendant. She said that it made her feel like a surfer girl even though she wasn't. Um, she was also into the Royal Tenenbaums, which is this Wes Anderson film. She loved Margot. I'm trying, thank you. She discovered eyeliner and she would wear these slip dresses with Dr. Martens, which honestly sounds like a look that I would want to recreate. Mike, he was very into Heidi Slimane, this uh, French photographer, he worked for Dior for like a hot minute. And um, what was in at the time, tight pants. So yeah, it sounds like him and Zoe were a little bit more, more Mike, that he was obsessed with like self-expression, so was she. But yeah, I thought it was kind of like cool to read their uh, phases through the years of their fashion sense. So here's where it gets really interesting. So once graduated, they went their separate ways. Mike ended up moving back to New York where he's originally from and he worked for Mark by Mark Jacobs as a men's accessory designer. Yeah, his resume is super impressive. Not only did he work for Mark Jacobs, he also gained some experience in the studios of the artist Matthew Barney. So if you don't know who Matthew Barney, it's this guy. He is a sculptor and remember, Mike studied sculpture, so it makes sense. So I thought this was kind of cool. Um, Matthew Barney also dated Bjork and has a kid with her. Um, just the more you know, thought that was interesting, thought I'd share. Working with him, having him as a mentor is a pretty big deal. Keep in mind, this guy is in his 20s. Super impressive. Okay, but let's not sleep on our girl Zoe because her resume is just as impressive, if not a little more. Like, I didn't know. She actually started her own business when she graduated. It is called Prince Ruth, and she actually had a collaboration with Urban Outfitters. She did like these super cool tapestries. The collaboration was called Sundances by Prince Ruth. Not only did she collaborate with Urban Outfitters, she would also sell her textile designs to like notable designers like Calvin Klein and Proenza Scholler. And at the same time, she was also working for opening ceremony as a knitwear designer. So again, this girl was like on the grind. She was like, let me do this and a little more. Keep in mind, Zoe was also in her 20s, so props to her. Eventually, Mike and Zoe decided they wanted to move past their commercial working environments. And they decided to design a collection together. In 2011, Eckhaus Lada would be formed. In 2012, Eckhaus Lada debuted their first fall-winter collection. It was well received with its use of repurposed materials, textures, tactility throughout its designs. They made a great first impression. The brand is known for being quite unconventional and breaking down fashion boundaries. The duo decided to use non-models 
and models to walk down the runway. Zoe had mentioned in an interview that she and Mike didn't want the same gender, the same height, the same age. They wanted variety. So we had musicians, um, chefs, gallery owners, even a skateboarder. They had Maya Ruth Lee, who was a pregnant woman, walk the runway. Like, talking about breaking down boundaries. This was super on brand for Ekal Slada, but you know, Sophie, the DJ, she had recently passed away. She actually walked for Ekal Slada, and she is a trans woman. They also had Devante Hines from Blood Orange, another musician, which I thought, you know, that's like a show that I would want to go to. I would love to see them walk. So it kind of reminded me of that one episode on Sex and the City, The Real Me, where Carrie Bradshaw, who is a writer, is offered a um, slot to walk a runway show, literally alongside Heidi Klum, who is like a seasoned professional. I love Sex and the City so much. It was very inclusive. That's the perfect word to describe that. There was an elderly woman, uh, all races, pregnant woman, um, trans woman, and I'm sure that it made some people uncomfortable because most people aren't used to seeing that. Most people are used to seeing six foot women, you know, gorgeous, sculpted uh, in their 20s, and that's not what they did. They, they really um, changed the standard. The idea was just, it was perfect, especially for that type of brand. At Kauslada is for everyone. At Kauslada is known for its unisex designs. For their spring collection in 2019, they held their runway show at the top of a metal factory in Bushwick, which is so not what anybody's used to. It's very industrial, it's not super glamorous like you know you'd think a runway show would be. So as far as I know, they've only had one small mishap a little controversial moment in 2017 for their spring campaign and um, they showed their models having sex it was very explicit um, and some of them had to, you know the world just wasn't ready for that the world wasn't ready for something that provocative in your face and um, it just didn't work out I wanted to take a second to name three of their collaborations that I really loved. So coming in at number one, we've got the Sun Buddies. These sunglasses are to die for. They are super cute. Then second one, I chose Ugg. I think it's important to embrace you, your own identity and not so it's important to be true to oneself. Fashion has helped me express myself or be who I am in realizing that there are no rules. I mean, say no more. Look at the color combo. Like, and then camper. another cute statement boot, statement shoe. In 2018, Ekel Slada was nominated for the LVMH award, which is the Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, that's what it stands for. It's pretty much an award given to a young designer um, under the age of 40. They were one of the nine finalists for that award. They didn't win, but it was still like an incredible honor to be nominated for such a prestigious award. In 2018, that same year, they also opened a show called Possessed at the Whitney Museum in New York, which was a pretty big deal because they were the first fashion-related exhibition to happen within, you know, like the past 21 years. With the success of their brand, they both taught as professors um, Mike taught at Pratt and Zoe taught at RISD as an alumni. They both wanted to relay the info to young, ambitious designers that were in the same position that they were in years ago. Ekhaus Slada currently has over 44 stock lists, including Nordstrom, Sense, and even Opening Ceremony, which is a full circle for Zoe because she used to work there. And the brand will continue to grow and they'll continue to get more stock lists. So we're gonna do a quick fit check before I check out. Um, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.
I'm wearing a Calzada. I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah. Bye.